try to follow along the way I'm leading it, but don't get hung up on it having to be a certain shape or having to um, adjust accordingly to make it work for you. I want you to leave your mat feeling better than you felt sitting down. Great. So we'll start as always with a seated grounding meditation, then move through a uh, asana practice or so movement practice and end with a nice long shavasana, final relaxation pose. Hey, Okay. All right, so we're coming to find a comfortable seated position. Hands can land on the knees, either palms up to give and receive energy or palms down to ground down. Yeah. And that can be in a chair or on the floor. If you're seated on the floor and there's any pain in your lower back, just lift your hips up higher than your knees and that should alleviate that stress. Go, go, if you can, chill. We'll take three cleansing breaths to start. Chest over hips, head over heart. Eyes can close if that's comfortable. We put out the eyes lower to a soft gaze just beyond your legs. Inhaling through the nose, shoulders rise up towards the ears. And the exhale drops the shoulders away with an audible sigh. Turning the breath just in and out through the nose if that's available. Or turning to a normal pace. I'm just taking a moment here to arrive. Let go of everything that came before and everything that's to come up after. And just become present to yourself here in this space. And beginning to allow sounds into your awareness. Maybe the smacking of your happy dog's tail on the ground. And the sound of traffic passing just outside the window. Letting it all in, all part of this moment, this experience. Notice the temperature of the air on your skin. And feel the weight where your body makes contact with the ground below you. The weight of your hands on your knees. And begin to scan your body from head down towards toes. I'm passing through an x-ray machine, scanning for any places of tightness or sensitivity. Any restlessness or fidgeting.
and taking note to work into those places that call out for your attention in this moment. And shifting the awareness up to the energetic body, pranamaya kosha. On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being exhausted, fatigued, ready for bed, 10 being so full of energy that it's hard to sit still. Where are you in this moment? What number? And shifting the awareness up to the breath. No need to change it, just observe inhalations, exhalations, and whatever space in between. Bringing the awareness up to the mind, Manomaya Kosha. Allowing thoughts and feelings to arise. Not engaging with them, not feeding into the stories, just witnessing them from a distance, like clouds passing in the sky. And just notice what are the quality of the thoughts today? Do they have a positive or a negative tilt to them? Are they fragments of ideas or long drawn out dramas? Not right or wrong, not good or bad, just something to notice. And we'll bring that attention back down to the breath. At any point in class, you feel yourself wandering away in a train of thought. You can always reconnect with the breath as your anchor. Even repeating internally, inhale. Exhale. As a silent personal mantra will actively expand the breath now here. Inhaling to fill the belly like a balloon, it expands. And exhale, pulls belly button in towards spine, deflating. Inhale, fills the belly and rib cage. Ribs expand out to the sides. Exhale, ribs release and belly pulls in. Inhale, fills belly, ribs, and chest, all the way up to the collarbones. Exhaling, releases chest, ribs, and belly. Continuing like this, inhaling from bottom to top. Exhaling, top to bottom. at your own breath's pace. <clears throat> Dirga pranayam, three part breath. Slow down your breath, deepen your breath, slow deep breaths here. And 
Release any clenching in the jaw, inviting space between top and bottom teeth. And tongue falls away from the roof of the mouth. come back to this breath, Dirga Pranayama, at any point in class would really be appropriate. This deep belly breathing. On your next exhale, just release any effort from the breath, just returning to a natural pace for yourself. And from this state, we might set an intention. Let's invite Hands to meet at heart center, palms pressed together, thumbs pressing into sternum, no space between the fingers. Slight tuck of the chin. And consider here setting an intention. It might be the sankalpa, the true heart's desire you've been working with, it might be the resolution we set, <clears throat> resolution or affirmation that you've been playing with all week. Something you might inspire you. And we'll seal those intentions with the sound of Om. First, a cleansing breath. Gently release the hands to the lap, chin drops towards chest, and then inhale, right ear rolls over towards right shoulder. Exhaling, chin to chest, left ear rolls to left shoulder. Just allowing the head to roll like this, side to side. Beginning to open up this space between neck and shoulders. Eyes can stay closed for this part. No wrong way of doing it. Next time the head rolls through center, bring it up to neutral and begin to roll the shoulders forward. Roll the shoulders back. And coming to stillness in the shoulders, inhale, arms sweep up overhead. And exhale, bend over to the right. Left arm reaching over, left hip pressing down into the ground, inhale up through center, and exhale over to the left. Inhale, center, waving over, exhale to the right. Following your own breath space here, just opening the side body from side to side. We got one more on each side. And 
Meet back and center, arms up overhead, and high twist to the right. Left hand lands on right knee, twisting the chest open towards the side wall. Inhale, up through center. Exhale to the left. Inhale, center. Exhale, right. So it doesn't have to be the deepest twist. In fact, it really shouldn't be. It's just probably the first twist of the day. Following the breath in to rise, out to twist. I'm just waking the body up to this movement. Begin to expand this range of motion last time. And we got actually one more to the left. And this is our last twist. And bring it back up to center. Bring the arms down. I'm gonna work on some neck rolls today. I did a little, some earlier in the week. So I'm gonna start bringing this more into practice. I'm just turning to the side. You don't have to, just so you can see a better illustration of what this is supposed to look like. So, seated up nice and tall, chest over hips. From my shoulders down, nothing moves. Just my head's gonna move. Chin tucks towards chest. And then I bring it down, down, down. And I can't go down any further. Start to look up. I'm trying to get my nose to make this circle as big as possible. Can't go back any further. I took the chin back in towards the chest. And you begin to create a smooth circle like this to the very edges of my reach. I'm just continuing, so it's not one circle or counting circle, it's just one continuous flowing motion. And now we'll change directions of that motion. So looking up, the head comes forward. It's almost like you're gonna scoop with the chin and you can't go forward anymore. Comes down, rolls up. Scooping forward, down. Whole time the shoulders are relaxed, they don't need to get involved in this. Nice, this is going to be our last. Circle, bring it back to center. Nice, I'm just gonna look over the left shoulder, the right shoulder, just side to side. Back to center, drop the ear left and right. All right, hands come up to shoulder height, wave the hands out, we get to wave out or warm up the wrists and play piano. Pressing the wrists down, wiggling the fingers side to side. Toss pizzas, bring the hands as far back as possible. And rotating to your full range of motion. Bring it 
gonna shake off water. Three, two, one. Bring the legs out in front. Spread and scrunch the toes. Roll out the ankles. Change directions. Nice bend in the knees, feet come mats distance apart and just drop the knees side to side. You wake up the hips. And then we'll actually come to turn, or you might already be facing this way on your mat, but with the feet flat on the ground and the knees bent in, hands come behind the knees, and the inhale, just like our uh, cow pose usually, belly presses into the thighs. You're gonna pull the chest back for a back bend, deep breath in, and exhale, rounding in the spine, pull away from the legs, chin tucks towards chest. Inhale, belly opens, or chest opens, belly presses into the thighs, shoulders pull back. Exhale, rounding like making the letter C with your spine. Follow your own breath's pace here for a few rounds. bring it back up to neutral. That last round. So pressing the belly up against the legs if you really can't do that, bring the legs a little bit in closer. I'm going to work with Navasana, it's called boat pose. So pulling the thighs in, keeping the shoulder blades squeezed together like I'm holding a pencil between them. I'm going to tilt back, back, back until my feet begin to rise. So I have three points of contact, my left sits bone, my right sit bone, and then the bottom of my tailbone, my sacrum. So it's a like tripod spot. You just kind of got to play around till you find. And then it's really easy to end up rounded here. If that happens, just reset. It's all good. Keeping a nice long spine. And from here, we're working towards getting the shins parallel to the ground. And keep the feet flexed like you're pressing against the wall in front of you or point the toes there's just like a purposefulness on the positioning of the feet flexed or pointed maybe you play with releasing the hands just to the sides you can just be like an inch away so you can grab on if anything so there's a pulling in an effort from these inner hips this inner hip area and the core a lot of it is the back, actually, shoulder blades pulling in towards one another. So you can redistribute some of the effort here. Full breath here. Nice. And then we release the feet down, release the knees open, bound angle pose like a diamond, Padakonasana, like butterfly. Just give it a couple like flaps out. Deep breath in, let it go. <sighs> All right, I'm gonna set up for another round. Hands come back behind the knees, belly presses up against the thighs, and tilt back. Once I've tilted back and found that, that balance point, my belly's not pressed up against the thighs anymore, but I'm still trying to lift my chest towards the ceiling to keep the back engagement so it's not just like abs working it's also the back flexing or pointing the toes and then maybe the hands come out to the sides 
and stay here for a further challenge. Inhale, opens the arms up like the letter T. Exhale, brings the arms forward. Inhale, they rise up overhead. Exhale, forward. Inhale, open. Letter T. Exhale, forward. Inhale, rise. Exhale, forward. Hands come behind the knees. Feet touch down. Knees splay open. Baddha Konasana, bound angle pose. Just let them pop out. I'll take a deep breath in to get tall. So I'm pulling on my feet. You could pull on your ankles or your shins to straighten out the spine. And on the exhale, release belly, chest, head. The goal isn't to get the nose to the toes or head to the feet or anything like that. We're just letting ourselves round over after all of that effort in the opposite direction to balance out the muscles. You can let the head hang heavy if that feels okay. If it doesn't and it brings pain, then just actively try to bring your nose past your toes so your neck stays a bit engaged for support. The hands can be on the feet or the ankles, and you can actually use that grip to leverage your elbows, pressing them into the knees. If you wanna get a hip stretch here too, a deeper hip stretch, I should say, you're already getting a hip stretch. Just breathing fully here, no tension in the jaw. Press it back up to seated. Knees come together. And we'll turn it over to our tabletop pose. Right foot steps up to meet uh, between the hands. Left foot steps up to meet it. Inhale to a halfway lift. Bring the feet nice and wide, like almost mat's distance apart. If you're taller than me, maybe it is mat's distance apart. And then exhaling into our uh, ragdoll pose. Can allow a bend in the knees. It can be a really deep bend too. We're letting the head be heavy, nodding the head yes. Shaking the head no. You can grab opposite elbows, creating a frame for your head, giving yourself a rock side to side, maybe straightening out one leg and then the other. It's really just like free movement here as we begin to wake up the backs of the legs. As we continue to stretch out the spine. And bringing it in towards center, towards stillness, release the hands down, bending in the knees, heel toe the feet together. So hands are on the ground or a block. And then we'll take a nice deep bend into the left knee. Left hand stays on the ground or the block. I'm letting my hips tilt all the way down with this left knee, right arm sweeps open. And we'll do backstroke circles with this right arm, nice and slow. Uh, speed is, and momentum is probably not our friend here. It's a bit of a balance. Nice and change directions. We'll go two rounds sweeping forward, just working into the shoulder. And as this hand comes down, we change the legs. Now the right knee is bent, left leg is straight or straight-ish, left arm sweeps open, stretching that hole outside of the left leg, press into that hip. 
And then we've got back strokes through this left arm, opening up the shoulder, full range of motion. And change the direction of the circles. We've got two going forward. And that hand touches down, bending in both knees so that the hands can reach. Inhale to a halfway lift, hands on shins. Exhale, forward fold. And inhale brings you all the way up to stand, rolling up one vertebra at a time. Heavy head comes up last. And when you arrive, arms sweep up overhead. Exhaling, hands to heart center. Inhale, arms sweep up overhead. Eyes follow fingertips. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale to a halfway lift and chair pose on the exhale. Bend in the knees, sink the hips, Utkatasana, arms sweep forward. Oop. That would help. There we go. Arms sweep forward. Okay, say, uh, you can also have the arms up overhead like by the ears. That kind of brings some pain into my um, my neck, that's just me. Notice if your butt is sticking out, just give it a little tuck in. Hips are so far back that I can see my toes past my knees. Full breath in here. Exhaling, belly drops to the thighs, arms sweep back. So I'm still in the chair pose, but it's like almost like you're a skier. <laughs> my arms are reaching back and up. Inhale brings you to an upright chair. Exhale, sweep it back like you're digging through snow. Inhale, forward and up. Exhale, down and back. Last time, forward and up. Forward fold on the exhale. Ah, hips come up, legs straighten out. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, hands down to the ground. Right foot takes a large step back. Left knees over left ankle. And then we'll drop the right heel in to create a 45 degree angle with the back foot. Make your feet nice and wide so your right foot's close to the right edge, left foot's close to the left edge. Super wide stance width wise. If I were to drop a line back with this front heel, it would not intersect the back leg. And here we're pressing up for warrior one. Coming up right. So I'm pressing into this front leg. And I'm working towards getting my hips squared. So if there were strings attached to my hip bones, they'd be the same distance from the short end of my mat. That might mean bringing the back foot in a little bit. It's a shorter stance than warrior two, or likely it is. Arms reach up overhead on the inhale. And the exhale, shoulders just melt away. Get a deep breath in here. And the exhale, and release the arms down and back. They interlace like you're holding your own hand. If that distance is not possible, for you, you don't reach, that's okay. You can grab a belt or a bandana to put in between the hands to close that distance. If you don't have one of those available to you right now, you can just bring the hands back straight behind you, kind of like Superman arms, but like straight behind you. All right, with that grip, pulling the shoulders back, shoulder blades pulled together, just that top, uh, that chest tilted back, tilted open, deep breath in. And exhaling, we're gonna roll forward nice and slow, super slow motion. It's gonna take more than a breath to lower down. You can use this left leg, left thigh as almost like a shelf. 
and then we're pressing back in, rolling up like a wave. So this is a motion that we've been working on all week. Inhaling at the top, with the shoulders pulled back, and exhaling as we roll forward, belly, chest, head. As you feel more comfortable, you can come in between the legs, inside the left leg, instead of using it as a shelf. But just taking your time to roll through this. We're opening up the space between the vertebra and the spine. Warming up all the fascia. The fascia is this webbing system that surrounds all of our muscles. All of that needs to be nice and loose before we can stretch any deep tissue muscles, uh, deep muscles. And the next time you wave forward, we're gonna stay there. So you can stay there with your shoulder or your belly on top of your left thigh. We can allow the body to come to the inside of that knee, pressing the shoulder against the knee. So I'll show you from a different angle. top or on the inside and pressing the knee into the shoulder, pressing the shoulder into the knee. This is called Humble Warrior. Head can be heavy, the arms can even come up towards the sky, giving the shoulders a stretch. We just got one more breath here. And then releasing the hands down to the ground to frame the left foot. Here, we'll start to straighten out the left leg and bend it. Straighten and bend, or you can go straight-ish. If you're having trouble reaching the ground here, you can always bring them up on blocks or stacks of books so you can bring the ground to you. Wow, a nice deep bend into the left knee, palms press down into the ground, left foot steps back to meet right foot, plank pose. Creating a straight line from the heels to the crown of the head. Deep breath in here. And exhaling the lower chaturanga, lowering halfway, creating 90 degrees with the arms, elbows pressed into the ribcage, then knees, chin, chest, touch down. We press it forward for Bhujangasana, our uh, baby cobra pose. Shoulder blades squeezed together. We're not using any arm strength at all. Glutes are squeezed tight, pressing into the ground. Tops of the feet pressed into the ground. Deep breath in here. And exhale releases forehead to the ground. And arms open up like the letter T. Inhaling, chest and shoulders rise. And arms rise, shoulder blades engaged. Exhale, lower is it down. Inhale, rising chest, shoulders, arms. Exhale, lowering chin or forehead, touch down. Inhale to rise. Exhale to lower. One more rise here. As we lower, bring the hands underneath the shoulders, big toes come to touch and press it back to child's pose. So big toes are touching, knees splay open, hips get sent back towards the heels, arms are forward, head releases down. You might give your forehead a little massage, giving your head a rock side to side. Just take a couple breaths here to catch your breath. And rest in stillness. So in fitness it's called recovery. So you're like recovering during your workout, but in yoga it's really a moment to 
reconnect with your intention, your purpose, your why. Why are you putting yourself through this? Why are you here this morning practicing? I'm pressing my hands into the ground, coming back to tabletop pose, toes tuck under, hips press up high, downward facing dog, and paddle out the heels, bending one knee and then the other, binding yourself into your downward facing dog, fingers spread wide, head hangs heavy, eyes are open between, looking between the heels or looking between the knees. Right leg sweeps up and back behind you towards the wall. And exhale, rounding the spine like cat pose, knee comes in towards nose, rounding forward for tiger pose, shoulders up over the wrist, right foot steps up between the hands. Left foot steps up to meet it. Inhale into a halfway lift, big toes touch, space between the ankles. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale brings you all the way up to stand, arms sweep up when you get there. And exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, arms sweep up overhead, eyes follow fingertips. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale to a halfway lift, hands on shins. Chair pose on the exhale, Utkatasana, send the hips back, the arms forward. My knees are squeezing in together like I'm holding a postcard in between them. Nice. Right arm opens up on the inhale, opening the chest like you're gathering a cloud. And exhale, squeezing that cloud out towards center and forward. Inhale, left, gathering. Exhale, forward, squeezing out. Inhale, right. Exhale, forward. Inhale, left. Exhale, forward. Standing straight up, reaching up, full body stretch. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, hands down to the ground. Left foot takes a step back. Bending in the right knee. Left heel lands down to create a 45 degree angle out. Keep the feet nice and wide, a nice wide stable stance as we press it up to warrior one, your Badrasana one. Left knee over left ankle, hips square themselves to the short end of the mat towards that wall. Both heels are down. Inhale, arms raise up overhead. And exhale, shoulders melt away from the ears. Another full breath here. And the arms release down to interlace, like you're holding your own hand behind you. Or grabbing that strap or um, belt, bandana, to have the hands connect. However your hands are, change the interlace of the hands. So if I have my right finger on top naturally, index finger, I'm gonna bring my left finger on top. It feels counterintuitive and kind of awkward. That's on purpose. So we're pulling the shoulders back and down. It's like I'm trying to re reach my fist, my knuckles down to the ground while lifting my chest. So we do all of that awkward uh, non-dominant hand stop to create new pathways in the brain. Deep breath in here. And exhale, we begin to wave, reaching forward, belly, chest, head, and then rolling back up like through cat pose, one vertebra at a time. It can take more than an inhale and an exhale to get all the way down and all the way up. Doing your best to slow down your breath, but don't rush through the body part here. 
So we're just building this relationship with balance, building this relationship with the strength in the legs. So no need to rush. It's okay if it's a couple breaths for each movement. And the next time you roll forward, staying here in this humble warrior pose with the belly on top of the thigh for stability or on the inside of the leg. Right shoulder pressing into right knee, right knee pressing into right shoulder. Head hangs heavy and the fingertips are reaching towards the sky, giving the shoulders a stretch. Still my hips are pressing in towards center to keep that stability without falling over all the way to the right side. One more breath here. And the hands come down to the lower back, unlace, and hands come down to the ground, framing the front right foot. Here we'll play with extending the right leg and bending it. So hands can be on the blocks or the ground. I'm just on tented fingertips. I'm just playing with bending and extending this front right leg. A nice deep bend in this right knee. Hands come flat onto the ground. Right foot steps up to meet, steps back to meet right foot. Uh, in our plank pose. Long line of energy from the crown of the head to the heels. A slight shift forward like tiptoes. And lowering down halfway chaturanga. Elbows come to 90 degrees. Then chin, chest, head. Knees, chin, chest. There we go. Come down to the ground. And we're pressing it forward and up for our cobra pose. Full cobra pose. Elbows stay bent. Even if you know you can straighten them out, it's more important, it's like we're bringing the chest forward, then up, shoulder blades squeeze together, glutes squeeze tight, full breath here. And then releasing the head down, you can bring your left arm, forearm in front to use as a pillow, the right knee bends, bring the hand back to grab the, the foot and bring the heel in towards the glute. The knees come in towards one another, so they're touching or close to touching. And then here, we'll lift up in the chest using the left elbow as leverage, as a what's it called, support. Change the grip on the hand so it's on the inside and we're just gonna kick the foot into the hand, lifting the knee up off the ground. This is a half uh, bow, floor bow pose. So I'm kicking, getting a bit of a stretch in the quad. Another full breath here. Then gently release down. Left arm comes onto the ground. You can use that as a pillow. Left hand reaches back to grab the foot, pulling the foot in towards the glutes for a quad stretch. And then we're lifting up in the chest, changing the grip on the hands, and then kicking the foot into the hand to lift the knee. Nice, we've got a full breath here. And then releasing that down, releasing that down. So the next pose is called Dhanurasana. So it's going to be the full floor bow. If that does not feel so hot on your body, what you can do is come into this like Superman pose that we're kind of in before. It's like bird flying pose and lift the legs. Otherwise, we're going to bend both heels in towards the glutes and reach both hands back 
too bad, the tops of the feet. So yeah, I'm just going from the outside. It's like, it feels naturally like that's the way you would go. And then knees come together. Sometimes they splay out to reach. Just try to bring the knees back together, whether they touch or not. I'm just making that effort. Mouth, chin, or forehead come center. And on the inhale, kick the feet into the hands, raise the chest, raise the shoulders, kicking hard, hard, hard into the arms here, our floor above. Shoulders, chest is being pulled open, shoulders, blades are squeezing together, I'm pulling my knees in together and feet up towards the sky. Full breathing here. It's okay if you're rocking forward and back, that's just your diaphragm working and getting some reps in as you breathe. You just got one more breath here. It's a slow release down. Gently landing the head, gently releasing the feet without slingshotting them, arms released down by the sides. Just come down flat for one breath. <sighs> And the knees bend and windshield wiper them side to side. Nice. Release the legs down the length of the mat. Hands come underneath the shoulders, toes tuck under. And we're pressing our way up to downward facing dog. We come through tabletop. And then send the hips up. Finding that spacing. Beautiful. Left leg swings up and back behind you towards the back wall. Deep breath in. Exhale, tiger pose, rounding in the spine, chin tucks towards chest, knee towards nose, shoulders come up over the wrists, left foot steps up between the hands, right foot steps up between the hands. Inhale to a halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, brings you all the way up to stand. Arms sweep up when you get there. And exhale, hands to heart center. Nice. And we'll turn to face one another, maybe grabbing a sip of water. Just take a moment, we just like Feels a lot of heat there. All right. So we'll meet facing one another. We'll bring the pointer. Better, I think. Okay. <laughs> Facing one another, bring the hands onto the hips. Right knee opens up to the side. And we'll drive the foot in towards the ankle. And that foot maybe rises up to the calf. Or inner thigh, avoiding the knee. Very tempting, but we're not going to hook the heel on the knee. It's bad for your, it's called your ACL, like your, that knee joint on the side, just unnecessary pressure. Instead, hook the heel with the calf muscle. Or you can use your hand to bring your heel up to hook with this inner thigh muscle instead. Either way, if the foot's at the ankle, the calf, or the thigh, we're pressing the hips forward and pulling this knee back. So this is counter action. Hips press forward, knee presses back, we're getting a nice uh, inner thigh opening here. Foot and the leg are squeezing together like you're holding a postcard between. And crown of the head's reaching up. Hands can be pressed together at heart center in Anjali Mudra. So that's a, a mirroring of the legs. So the foot and leg are squeezing together. The palms are squeezing together. And just notice like the harder you press your palms together, it actually broadens the shoulders. 
So by squeezing in in the front, we're expanding the space between the shoulder blades in the back. So everything we do with our body has a counteraction. And once we start learning that relationship between press and expansion, between tuck and stretch, and once we start learning all those, we can really use it to our advantage so things aren't just happening randomly to us or feeling like a side effect. The actual action that we take is for the purpose of the Thing that will naturally happen afterwards. The response. So we just got one more breath here in our Virabhadrasana tree pose. And release in reverse. Touching the butt down. Awesome. Hands onto the hips. Roll out this ankle. And this knee opens out to the side. Dragging the foot in towards the ankle. The toes can stay grounded on the floor here. When you're ready, you can begin to drag up. Maybe they're ready already, and maybe today is not that day. That's okay. There's still value in being here. We're still tucking the hips forward, pressing this knee open. Learning to balance with all the weight on the right leg. And if you are raising your foot, just being mindful not to land on the knee. When you're on the thigh, I find it easier the higher you bring it up. It feels like, it sounds like it would be harder, but it's actually easier the higher you get up if you can hook onto that like little meaty edge, that like thigh gap area, <laughs> right? Pressing the hips forward, this knee sways open. There's just like more meat up here than there is down there. So we're using our own body, bodies to our advantage. And it's not the same as us taking advantage because it's all for the wellness of the body. So it's a nice symbiotic cycle of, oh, okay, my body's shaped this way, then I'm gonna use that to my advantage in getting through this pose which will in turn benefit my body, can reduce stretch, stress, reduce stress, increase flexibility. Whatever else you might find in this practice. So standing tall, finding a place for my hands to go. And just like let them wave out. It's called tree pose, so especially with my, my kids, yoga kids. They always like being different trees. They'd be like a palm tree or a cactus, or like a Christmas tree. They're all about it. So a windy tree was a favorite. So the important thing is that the core, the trunk, is stable. But all the leaves and branches are really up to you. I just got one more breath here. We'll release in reverse. Touching that foot down. And shake that leg out. Shake both legs out. We're just gonna begin to shake actually. Coming into our lymphatic shake. So we're just hopping up and down. If a full little jump is not something you're into or something that your neighbors downstairs are into. You just lift the heels and drop the heels down. Lift and drop the heels. Toes never even reach the ground. Never even leave the ground, rather. Just letting my shoulders lift and lift and drop, lift and drop, lift and drop. Shake out the hands. Just let it all shake out, all of whatever stress, whatever disappointment, whatever just happened or didn't happen in that last pose, all the resetting, all the frustration that can come with resetting, just let it all go. Whatever happened, happened. Whatever will be, will be. It's all good. You showed up. You already won today. 
from here will come into our breaths of joy. So, on that third ha, that doesn't have to be filled with joy. The reaction, the end point is joy. So whatever you've got to fuel this breathing practice with, invite it in so you can let it go, let it surface. If you keep it pressed down, pressed down, you're not gonna get the full benefit of the opportunity here. So just let all that shit kind of bubble up so we can process it through. And what this breath of joy looks like, it's four parts, three sips of air in to create one full inhale and one big ha out, exhale to let it all out, forceful exhalation. So it looks like 33% of your air in, 33% of your air in, 33% of your air in. There's no exhalations in between that. And then, ha, belly comes down, arms sweep back. Just like when we were in our chair pose, same movement. So, in, 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 ha, in, 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 ha, in, 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 ha. Halfway through, join in now. Ha! Ha! Three left. Ha! Ha! Last one. just breathe here let the legs be nice and wide if your body's still swaying a little side to side that's okay but we're just releasing any effort from putting into the movement here hand can come onto the belly onto the heart just taking inventory of anything that may have surfaced Maybe the temperature of your skin compared to the air or even your hands has changed, changing that relationship to our environment through breath. Maybe heartbeat or breath has quickened. We're basically shaking up the snow globe that is ourselves, quite literally shaking up our bodies. And this is just that moment where we stop and wait and watch the glitter the dust settle. Gently blink your eyes open, releasing your hands. We'll turn to face the back of the mat. Inhale, arms reach up overhead, nice and gentle, full body stretch. Exhale, forward fold, bending in the knees. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, coming down onto a, into a kneeling, not a kneeling, into a crouched position. So let yourself come up off the heels. So I'm like on tiptoes almost, sitting on my heels. I'm going to give a hug to my knees. So maybe the heels come down. If they don't, that's all right. We're just giving a, all a squeeze in, in, in. Tight, tight, tight.
deep breaths here into the space between your shoulder blades. And releasing the head out, bring the hands back behind you. I mean, uh, extending the legs out in front of you. We're gonna roll all the way down, reclining, hugging the knees in, give it a rock side to side. Both knees come over to the right, right hand lands on top of the left knee, left arm opens up like the letter T. Pressing the left shoulder down to the ground, otherwise the rest of the body is totally relaxed, just letting gravity do the work. It's not important that the knees touch down to the ground or that the knees touch one another. We're just doing a gentle spine, gentle yet deep spinal twist here, reclining spinal twist, supta matsyandrasana. Bring the head up through center, bring the knees up through center. The knees fall over to the left. Right arm opens up like the letter T. Right shoulder is pressing down towards the ground. Head comes back up through center, knees come up through center. Notice, is there any last movement, stretch, or wiggle that your body is asking for that would really round out your practice, really? Any last body part that asks for your attention? It doesn't have to have a fancy yoga name. It doesn't have to be an official pose. Whatever it might be. Allow yourself to move through that shape now. As we prepare for Shavasana, final relaxation pose. Grabbing any blanket or socks, since <laughs> our body temperature does lower during this posture. Whatever prepara preparations needed for Shavasana. Final relaxation pose, and I'm going to come up to seated, but you stay reclining just so I can speak to you and play some singing bowls. You're making your way into your final relaxation pose now. Allowing the legs to extend down the length of the mat. Feet land at least a foot apart from one another. Legs so relaxed that the feet naturally splay out. If you're finding pressure in the lower back, or any pinching in the lower back from this, just allow yourself to, um, or just in, bring a blanket or a pillow roll towel underneath the knees to alleviate that pain. So when we bend in the knees, we alleviate some of the pressure on the lower back. Arms released down by the sides, palms face open, a symbol, a mudra of receptivity. Allow yourself to receive the full benefits of your effort here today. Eyes can close. And if that's not comfortable, just allow a soft gaze at the ceiling. Not staring, not glaring, not looking at anything in particular. And we'll start this just as we did our grounding meditation with three cleansing breaths in through the nose and an audible sigh out through the mouth. Audibly sighing helps us get into a parasympathetic rest and digest mode, leaving stress. Inhale through the nose. <sighs> 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 
and allowing the breath to continue just in and out through the nose that's available. Allowing the exhalations to become longer and deeper than the inhalations. And with every breath, feel your body sinking heavier into the ground below you. Supported by this earth. Invite space between top and bottom teeth as the jaw hangs heavy and tongue falls away from the roof of the mouth. And all the muscles surrounding the lips and nose relax. Eyes rest heavy in their sockets. Eyelids barely touching. The space between the eyebrows broadens as all the muscles in the forehead relax. And all the muscles surrounding the ears and head relax. Throat and neck release. Shoulders melt away. Upper arms and elbows release. Forearms and wrists relax. The backs of the hands, palms, knuckles, fingers, fingertips, fingernail beds, whole hand, alive with vibration, alive with creative potential rest and integrate your effort. Upper back, middle and lower back, relax. Chest naturally rising and falling. Housing lungs that oxygenate the body and bring in prana, life energy, from the environment into ourselves. In between two lungs, your heart, sending lifeblood. throughout the whole system. Belly naturally rising and falling with the breath. Glutes, hips, pelvis, all rest heavy, grounded. Thighs and knees relax. Lower legs and ankles release. And heels, tops of the feet, arches, toe ball mounds, and all of the toes and support all our weight rest and relax. 
full body resting. Full body resting. Full body resting. Allow for everything that did and did not happen in class today. And know that in yoga, practice makes practice. Nothing more, nothing less. And slowly begin to Deepen your inhalations, allowing them to become longer and deeper than your exhalations. Inviting movement back into the body, begin to wiggle fingers and toes. Head gently rock side to side. And the arms reach up overhead for a full body stretch. Allow your knees to bend and roll over to whichever side feels natural landing in a fetal position. Fully released and fully supported by the ground below you. Bring to mind any intention or dedication you set for class today. And if that intention inspires you, take it with you off the mat and into the world. Allow it to affect you and the people around you for the rest of your day. Gently with as little effort as possible, press your hands into the ground to come up to a seated position, just like how we started class. Hands come to meet at heart center in Anjali Mudra. Today, we worked on a bunch of core, or a series of core strengthening um, positions. The first namaste is said silently to yourself, thanking your body for the effort it put into class. And the second namaste is said out loud to one another. Namaste. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me this morning. I hope you find something that serves you. Saturday. You're welcome. Thank you for joining me. I've loved having you in class all week. It's like a nice way to start. Um, yeah, I feel like I'm like a partner. I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm committed that like even if even if I'm like I'm practicing like even if no one no one's here because I think um, 
no, that's what I want my January to look like. Yoga every morning. But it's definitely added motivation to know that um, that you'll be here. I'm like, yes, okay. If I don't feel like showing up for myself today, I will show up for Shio. <laughs> and, um, and everyone else who's been popping by too, it's been really,